This video is going to be a quick dive into PyTest markers and these can be used to set metadata and tags on your test functions when you're using PyTest. We're going to look at some markers that are built into PyTest and we'll also have a quick look at some markers and external plugins for PyTest, for example in the PyTest Django plugin. Now adding these markers as we're about to see it gives you a nice flexible way of filtering the tests that are actually run and PyTest allows you to pass some filters as part of the PyTest command so we're going to see that very soon as well. Now before we get started if you want to support this content check out this coffee page that we've got linked below the video and give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're finding this content useful. Now I want to open VS Code where I have a very simple Python file here. It contains a single function called getUnitCost. Now imagine we're developing a language model here and we're passed in some text. We then split the text on the whitespace character and we get back a token count. So we basically take this text, we split it on the whitespace and then we take the length of the resulting list to get back a token count. Very naive method, not recommended in production really. And then we have a simple if elif else statement here returning a cost for the query to the language model. So if the token count is less than 10 we'll return 0, if it's between 10 and 50 we'll return 1 and otherwise no matter what the length is we're going to return 2. Now at the bottom we have this section here, we get some input from the user, we call the function and then print out the cost to the terminal. So let's try running this, python main.py and I'm going to enter some random text here and we're going to see what comes back. So we get back 0 here and that makes sense because when we split this there's no spaces in what I entered. So let's try this again and I'm going to copy some text. So I'm going to paste this in, this is related to formula 1 and we get back a token cost of 1 here. So let's clear this out, we don't need that anymore. What we do want to do is write some unit tests for this function and after we write those we'll start demonstrating markers in PyTest. Now I'm going to use uv to create a project here with the uv init command and that generates these files here. We don't need hello.py so I'm going to remove that. And if you look at the Python version here, you can see we're using Python 3.13. And we also have the pyproject.toml file. So we have an empty dependency array at the moment. We can use the uv add command and we're going to add pytest to this project. So that adds pytest to the dependencies. And if you want to know more about uv, check out the previous video that should be appearing on the screen now that we did on that topic. Now in pyproject.toml, we can also specify options for pytest. So I'm going to go to the documentation. And if we look at the reference guides in the configuration section, there's a section on configuring PyTest using a pyproject.toml file. And you can see the options here, the any options that are passed in using this statement here, this directive. And this option is important here because it's going to tell PyTest where to look for tests in this project. So I'm going to go back to pyproject.toml and just underneath the dependencies, we can paste in a bit of code here. So we're defining these any options for PyTest. We're adding the dash RA flag to the PyTest command using add opts. And then we have the paths here and that's going to look for a file called tests.py. Now on the left hand side I want to create that just now so it's going to be called tests.py. And let's create a simple dummy function here. So it's going to be called test dummy and we're going to return 1 less than 2. Hopefully that will evaluate to true. And in order to run this let's clear the terminal at the bottom. And we're going to use the uv run command and we're going to run pytest. So let's try that out just now and hopefully we're going to find one test and indeed this has collected one item and notice the warning below here did you mean to use assert instead of return indeed I actually did mean that so we're going to assert that one is less than two so that's my mistake apologies for that and let's try running pytest again with the uv run command and we get back the green color here that's much better and our one test has passed so what we've done here is we've set up a project we've got this simple function here and we're adding in pyproject.toml the options for the pytest command and then we run that using uv run pytest. Now what I want to do is actually unit test this function that we have called get unit cost. So let's go back to tests.py and I'm going to remove this dummy function here and let's create a function here called test token pricing. Now from the main.py file where we defined the function let's import that function at the top and we're going to create some assertions here. So we're going to call the function called get unit cost and we're going to pass in some text. So let's pass in some numbers here, one, two, and three. And if we split this text by the space, we're going to get back a list with three elements. And if we look back at the main.py file, the token count being less than 10 should return zero here. So in the assertion that we're writing in this function, we expect calling that function to return 0.0. .0. And let's create a second assertion just below that. So we're counting up to 11 here. When we split that, we're gonna get back 11 elements. And if we go back to main.py, this else if block here is going to evaluate to true, so we're going to expect the function to return 1.0. So let's put this equality in here, 
And finally, we want to test out this final branch of the if statement, and that's when we return 2.0. That's only going to happen when the token count is greater than 50. So let's put a simple statement in here. We're going to assert that get unit cost, and I could type the numbers 1 up to 51 here as text, or we could take advantage of the unbelievable flexibility of Python. So we're going to put in the number 1, and we're just going to multiply that by 51. And let me put a space here, we shouldn't forget the space of course because we're calling dot .split and that should return 2.0 from this function. So let's clear the terminal at the bottom and we're going to rerun the pytest command and hopefully this is going to evaluate to true and all tests are going to pass and you can see that's what's happened. Now I want to demonstrate some of these markers in pytest now. So let's say that this pricing model here is not good enough for the company and we need to rewrite this code here to calculate the cost that's associated with a given text. What we could do is we could just delete the test and remove it from our test suite, but that's not very good because you're going to want to bring this test back at some point, and just deleting it might mean that it never comes back and that functionality is never properly tested. So PyTest has a useful marker, and that's the skip marker. So let's go back to the documentation here on custom markers, and if we search for the skip marker here, you can see that we have it here. So this is going to skip the given test function with an optional reason. So let's use this in our test module and we're going to import pytest at the top here and we can then use the pytest.mark.skip decorator here and the reason that we're going to pass in is that we're rewriting the cost model. So now if we go back to the terminal at the bottom and rerun the command here for pytest you can see it collected that one item but that was skipped and we also get the reason printed to the terminal. Now we can also skip if certain conditions are not met so let's go back to the documentation just underneath the skip decorator we also have skip if so this is another marker and you can pass a condition to that as well as a reason. So the condition, let's say, is to check that the Python version is less than a specific version. That would be one example. So at the top, I'm going to import the sys module from Python. And let's change the decorator to skip if. And I'm going to move this onto new lines just so we can see it better. So the condition that we're going to pass in here is that we're going to check that sys.version is less than the following. So Python version 3.9. And this should actually be version info here. And at the bottom, I'm going to open a terminal here. And we're going to import the sys module. And we're going to look at what this gives us back. So the major version is version 3. And the minor is version 11 that I'm running that on. Remember, I'm not running this from the UV environment. Let's exit out of here. And this is now the condition that we're passing to the skip if marker. So if we now run the command uv run pytest, the Python version in this UV environment is this one here. So is this condition going to evaluate to true or false? Well, the version is greater than 3.9, so it's going to evaluate to false. So we're not going to skip this particular test. So let's try this out and make sure that that's true. We collect one item and it is not skipped, as you can see below. If we invert this, for example, skip the test if the version info is greater than 3.9. Let's save that and go back to the terminal and rerun PyTest. You can see that this time we are now skipping because the condition evaluates to true. So that's two useful markers, the skip marker in PyTest and the skip if marker that can also take a condition and skip the test based on that condition. Now I want to show the x fail marker now. This can be useful when you have a known bug in your code and you want to track that bug until it's fixed. Now what I'm going to do is create a function just below this one and it's going to be a second function called test token pricing with no input. Now if we pass none to this function here, we are expecting it should return zero. But is this actually going to be true if we go back to main.py we can't call none.split, that doesn't work, that's going to cause an exception. So if we go to the terminal here, let's clear this out and run pytest, this time we get a failure. And we get that error message, none type has no attribute split. Now let's say that this is some super complex fix here that we're trying to create, and we want to keep the test around to track this error or this problem as we go through development. So we can use xfail for this, so let's go back to the documentation. Again, this can take a condition and a reason. If we look at the right hand side, what this does is it marks the test function as an expected failure. That's the x part of xfail. It's an expected failure, and you can also pass conditions there, and it's only going to be expected to fail if those conditions evaluate to true. We're going to use it very simply now by going back here and let's again use pytest.mark.xfail this time and we can pass a reason into that, for example, fixing this issue. Let's again go to the terminal now and clear this out and rerun pytest and see what happens. And you can see at the bottom we've skipped a particular test and we also have the xfail appearing on the terminal and telling us that this issue is getting fixed and the test is still around 
and presumably as soon as we fix this super complex issue, we can remove this decorator and we can run the test as normal. So these are three useful markers. We have skip, skip if, and xfail. Another very useful one built into the PyTest module is parameterize. And this calls a function multiple times and passes in different arguments in turn. And that's something I've used a lot in the past. It's so useful it might deserve its own video. Let me know if you'd be interested in that in the comments. Now we can also define our own custom PyTest markers. And these work like the tags that we saw in a recent video I did on testing in Django applications. So the Django testing module has this notion of tags. You can tag your test suite and you can tag individual functions and classes. And then you can conditionally run sets of tests based on those tags. We can do similar with PyTest markers. Now to start with, we need to register our custom markers. So there's a section that I'll link below the video on how to do this. It's very simple to register markers. We just define them in the PyTest config. So we have a markers section here and there's two markers being registered, one for web test and that's to mark a test as being a web test. And we also have a slow marker that marks a test as being slow. So you can register multiple markers by defining each one on its own line. And in a pyproject.toml file, you can do this by using a list. So let's go to the toml file here and under the pytest options here, I'm gonna add a markers section. So let's paste these markers in and I have two here. One is called slow and the other one is just called amazing marker. And this is coming from the documentation. So I'm gonna go back to this here. There's another section on registering marks that tells you how to do it in a pyproject.toml file. And you can see this slow marker here to mark tests as slow. Now notice that you can pass dash m to the pytest command. And then you can pass something like this, a conditional statement. And if you want to deselect slow tests, you can pass not slow into that dash m option. And basically that's gonna run all tests in your test suite that are not designated as being slow. So let's see how to do that just now. Let's go back to our project and save pyproject.toml. So we have this slow marker. I'm gonna go back to tests.py and let's use that in the test token pricing. So I'm gonna remove the skip if marker here and now we're gonna use the slow marker. So let's say that this test function is very slow. It's gonna take a long time to complete the testing. We basically marked it as being slow here by using this custom marker. And I'm gonna add a couple of extra dummy functions here. So very simple functions with basic assertions. And we're also marking these as being slow. For the second one, I'm going to use the second marker that I registered, which was amazing marker. And we can see that in pyproject.toml here. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna try running the tests and we're going to filter out the tests that are marked as slow. So let's go back to the terminal just now and clear that out. Now we're gonna bring back the pytest command, but this time we can pass the dash m option. And this allows us to run tests by marker expressions. So in order to run the ones that are not slow, we can pass in this expression of not slow and that should find the other tests in the test suites. Notice that two were deselected here and those were the ones marked as slow. Now we can just run the slow ones if we want as well. So let's bring back that command here. And instead of not slow, we can just run slow here and it's gonna find the two that are slow and it's gonna run those in our test suite. And one other thing we could do here is group our tests into different parts. For example, you might want tests for unit tests. You could give them a particular marker and you could also give markers for integration or end-to-end -end tests as well and just run those specifically by passing that dash M option to the pytest command. We could also mark API tests with an API marker and so on. So this is very useful in PyTest. It gives you nice flexible ways of filtering the tests that you want to run at a given time. And that's especially useful in a large project that's got potentially thousands of tests that take a long time to complete. Using markers, you can then run a subset of those tests and that's gonna be much quicker to complete. Now to see the equivalent functionality in Django, check out the video that should be appearing on the screen now. And I just want to finish the video by looking at the PyTest Django plugin for PyTest. And specifically, we're gonna look at database access. Now PyTest Django takes a conservative approach to enabling database access. By default, your tests will fail if they try and access the database. To enable database access in tests, we have a marker from the PyTest Django plugin, and it's this one here. I'm gonna make this bigger so we can see that better. It's the pytest.mark.djangodb marker. When you decorate your function with that, it's gonna be able to access the database. So that's an example of a very useful marker from a third-party plugin for PyTest. So that's about all for this video on markers. These are beneficial. They allow you to set metadata on your PyTest functions and you can then use them for modifying behavior and also for filtering tests later on. If you're enjoying this content and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page just below the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.